Lots of clucking, lots of barking. Lots of clucking and lots of barking. Now we're gonna start yapping. <laughs> yeah. All right. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Uh, floppy, floppy microphones here. Okay. We're okay. Yes. We are okay. We're good. We're good. Uh -huh. And that's a wrap. We'll see you tomorrow. Well, I thought we would just kind of go through the our events. The okay. events and the events around us. Our experience this weekend with the storm. It was a long and stressful weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so we recorded on Friday evening. That was about five o'clock. Mm -hmm. And you guys saw that post late Sunday night. Maybe you watched it um, Monday. And we anticip we were going to just post that as normal for Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, but after we filmed, we went into town. Right? Is that the first thing we did? I think. We, oh, that's you we needed did. to get some milk, but we wanted to check out the bridges. Right, yeah. Um, I was out of milk, and I didn't want to be out of milk because I need my lattes <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> and then we, bread. Yeah. Uh, you needed some bread. So we wanted to, by, by that time, we had already heard reports that the Pigeon River in Newport and the French Broad River in going through Newport was flooding and they were really high levels and that they were closing um, access to downtown Newport. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, we're going to go into town. Why don't I want to I want to swing by and see if I can get some uh, footage of the French Broad River, because the reports were stating that later that evening it was going to get below like three inches below historic heights that happened in was 1867 i think it was 65 yeah mm -hmm. so i wanted to get some i wanted to see that in person and then i wanted to get some footage so we ended up driving um into newport and then um <laughs> i got some footage of <laughs> the flowing the very fast flowing very high mm -hmm. water levels of the french broad river and you guys actually may have seen that footage already because we posted that as a Kramer Life video. Um, and I will say yes, it was rather <laughs> stupid of me to be on that bridge filming, but I did and I'm safe, but lesson learned. So <laughs> I was not on the bridge filming. <laughs> no, we, no. She stayed in the car with, with Kinsley yep. off the bridge. I went on the bridge. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Shouldn't have done it, but got that footage. <clears throat> so then we ended up um, heading, heading to the grocery store and we got... We tried uh, Dollar General first. Yes. And all of the essentials were completely wiped off the shelf already because there's obviously Dollar Generals much closer to us when you live in the country than most grocery stores. Yeah. So. And the reason that we um, did that at that point is because the, the weather had stopped. The, the, the mm -hmm. high winds had stopped. All the yeah. rain had stopped. Things seemed to have cleared out. And so we're like, okay, we're we're over the worst of it. Yeah. Get my microphone to <laughs> be shaped correctly. Um, yeah. So we stopped at Dollar General, and didn't have what we needed. didn't we have what we needed. So we ended up going to one of the grocery stores we go to, mm -hmm. and um, we got milk yep. and we got bread. Yep. And we headed home, and we had to uh, cross the river for that. Mm -hmm. So. When we, as we were uh, getting home, just before we got home, we got a text from the neighbor saying, power out. Mm -hmm. So we pull into the driveway and sure enough, there was power out to our house. And then on and off for the next um, couple hours that evening, power went on and off. Oh, okay. Didn't it? I don't think so. I, I remember it going on and off a few times. Maybe right at the beginning it was the, yeah. Yeah. And so with power being out, internet was out, but our phones were working. Things seemed to be okay. Mm -hmm. Well, um, so I think by that point, we, I brought in a, one of the Blue Eddies into the RV 
and we hooked up the internet you modem did, to that. Did it do that, that was Friday? Thursday. Thursday. Because I worked all day Friday on it. Okay. So we so our internet should have been stable, but it wasn't. It, it was still out, even though the internet box itself had uh, power. power. Mm -hmm. So we went to bed, mm -hmm. and we woke up Saturday morning to having no power, no power, no internet service, no cell service, and no cell service. Mm -hmm. um, but the weather. Oh, weather seemed was, okay. Yeah, weather and seemed fine. So we just went about doing our chores and making sure the animals were all taken care of. Mm -hmm. Yep, we had and, we had water access yep. and just doing the normal thing. Yep. No reason to believe or to know beyond we had, yeah beyond we had no access <laughs> beyond what we already knew about the flooding of the the uh, pigeon in the French Broad that mm -hmm. anything was aloof beyond that. Well, I'm in the house working, decided to work on some of the electrical uh, lines in the circuit panel since I had no power. Good time to do that. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm in there. You're in the RV somewhere doing something. I don't remember what. And the dogs start barking a little bit more than, than usual. Mm -hmm. And I hear oh, a... I was taking a nap. Oh, okay. And... Mm -hmm. Um, Something yeah, I you, never do. Yeah, because you didn't, I didn't get sleep, at sleep all. very well the night before, yeah. Yeah. Well, all of a sudden we hear uh, the sound of a police siren, kind of one of those... Yep, the, the warning. The warning sound. Like to get out of the way. Yeah. We hear that. I hear that. And the dogs are barking. I'm like, mm -hmm. what in the world? So I, I walk outside. And by the time I got to the top of the driveway to see down to where um, the end of the gate, the end of the driveway, they horned again they did the signal again so i jumped onto the lawnmower and i headed down there and at this point i also had heard it it woke you up it woke me up and so i got out of bed this was about one two three four o'clock what time oh it was early it was probably like one o'clock in the afternoon okay yeah and yeah because the chores had been completed and we had already eaten breakfast lunch whatever mm -hmm. and then I took a nap after that and then you started working on it so mm -hmm. it was still fairly early in the day so I head down to the, where the officers are at, um, at the end of our driveway dogs are barking and as I get kind of close to the drive to the gate the officer rolls down the window peeks out and goes are you Nate <laughs> like yeah <laughs> and he kind of backs up his car into anticipating me opening the gate so I but the gate doesn't go that direction so I said, hold on, I'll, I'll, I'll come out there. So I open up the gate and I walk around and I close it so the dogs can't come out. And I said, I is this a wellness check? <laughs> and he goes, yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm not going to say who it was, but on the phone, the person that was doing the wellness check for us said, hey, this is so-and-so. Are you guys okay? And I'm like, yeah, we're fine. We have no, <laughs> we have, we have no cell service. So I can't reach out to anybody mm -hmm. but no we're totally fine he goes oh okay well we were just really worried about you we, we've been trying to get in touch with you for several hours after hearing about the flooding of the river that's behind us yeah and like everyone all of the messages now that we do have power we're going back and seeing it was you know anyone within a mile of the river should evacuate and i mean our property touches it and we had no idea because we had no access to internet or any means of communication yeah i had no clue so had no clue the, um i feel like at that point we knew the bridges were closed no we knew water was going to be we knew uh, no something. the bridges were closed we knew we were stuck in town no we that's when we found out we were stuck in town was the officer okay because the bridges were both closed on either side of us that's right so we couldn't get to to either of the larger towns on either side of us. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so speaking with the officer, um, one of the things that we knew was that there was a potential that that water service from the from the town was mm -hmm. going to be shut off. It was it was rumored. I don't remember how I think we got that oh when we were driving home Friday night and we received the text from our neighbor saying no power, they also said that that water. water yeah so we actually had bought a case of water 
at the store. Yeah, we had That's gotten. Yep. So I asked the officer, I said, hey, have you guys heard anything about the water shut off? And they said, no, but it's probably very likely. Mm -hmm. He goes, um, but you wouldn't, uh, but then he mentioned that all of the bridges around us closed. were closed and one bridge going over the same river um, way into a different town had collapsed. Mm -hmm. And we're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, so we were basically, we had no ability to get, to get anywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, Even if, if it was an evacuation, at that point, we wouldn't have been able to evacuate. Not by car. Not by vehicle. It yeah. would have had to have been air yeah. out, which, I mean, we live on fairly high ground. Even even though our property touches the river, we're, where our operations are and where all of our animals are and where we are, are is at least 80, it's, 85. It's 85 feet above the floodplain of the river, the typical floodplain of the river. Yeah. Which obviously we're above typical, but yes, <laughs> yeah. This particular one, mm -hmm. we were way above typical. So we are then coming to understand a little bit more, like, oh wow, there's a lot of stuff happening around us. Yeah. And so, what we ended up doing was we uh, we found out that Katie's work phone, mm -hmm. which was using a different provider than our personal cell phones, had access had cell coverage had cell coverage. Mm -hmm. Um, so we started reaching out to everyone, <laughs> reaching out to, to people through her work phone yeah, and saying, Hey, this is my work phone or this is an emergency. We're just letting you all know that we're okay. You know, um, when everything dies down, just go back to using my normal cell number. Yeah. Don't use this number. But so we started reaching out to, uh, those that did the wellness check on us, to our neighbors, just everybody around us, all of our family saying, mm -hmm. Hey, we are okay we're okay and just trying yeah. to figure out what was going on. And are you okay? Is there anything you need for like the neighbors around us and just checking in on them as well? Yeah, so this was this was Saturday, mm -hmm. uh, now late afternoon, early evening kind of time frame that we're just mm -hmm. like, okay, all right, so this is going to be potentially a long haul because we have no idea when they're going to be, if, if the bridges are going to be open or yeah, not. Or when power's going to come back or service. Yeah, I have no clue. And so thankfully we had all the blue eddies and were able to keep my purse or my work phone charged so that we still had some means of communication. And through that, I also uh, had the ability to start reading some articles so we could be a little bit better informed about what was happening around us. Mm. So we, so the concern that we had uh, here locally to the on the homestead was making sure that our freezers mm -hmm. and our refrigerators were um, powered. powered and and yeah because we have a lot of meat in the freezers down in the basement mm -hmm. and we have obviously food that we don't want to go bad in the refrigerators here in the rv so we were using the combination of our propane generator that we had when we were traveling mm -hmm. and then the various blue eddy power stations that we um, have uh, told you guys all about on the Kramer Life, and we were using those to keep power to refrigerators and freezers, mm -hmm. and and um, also charge our RV so we could have lighting mm -hmm. when we'd use candles the majority of the time, but we could ha at least turn on the lights when we absolutely needed to. Yeah, so that that worked out really well. Um, actually, that that worked out yeah really well. We didn't lose any any food mm -mm. whatsoever. All of the meat stayed really frozen in the freezers. Mm -hmm. I mean, the freezers supposedly will hold a frozen, hold everything frozen, solid frozen for 48 hours, but we still didn't want to risk it. And we also have them wrapped in the insul yeah, yeah. in the insulation stuff too, right? The Reflectix. Yeah, yeah, they're, <laughs> they're, they're well beyond insulated. Yeah. And with the weather being crazy, the temperature was significantly cooler than normal for this time of year. So that also helped. It was in the 60s and 70s rather than how it had been in the mid to high 80s. Yeah, helped the refrigerators and freezers, but also helped it so we didn't have to run the AC inside mm -hmm. the house and the RV here. So all in all, that that was okay. Yeah. Um, but we were still having that lingering, well, what about water? Mm -hmm. What's going to happen with water? So as we started uh, having communications with neighbors, they would send us 
alerts that they were receiving, mm -hmm. letting us uh, know on updates on things, including, you know, the water and stuff. Mm -hmm. So basically Saturday was kind of preparing for longevity of mm -hmm. no power, no access to water and no reliable internet, mm -hmm. right? And same with Sunday. And yeah, so that, that pretty much happened all through uh, Saturday evening. We actually got, we actually went to bed early. Yeah. Cause like. Oh, well, you know, it's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I started reading a book and I'm like, oh, I'll fall asleep. And once it gets dark out here, there's not a lot outside you can do. And now that it's getting dark here at like 730 and especially with no power, it's real dark out here because mm -hmm. <laughs> nothing is lit up. Yeah. We even have an exterior light um, that is on from dusk till dawn. And it, it's, it was amazing how dark it was. And with the cloud coverage, you, could, like, you couldn't really see the stars. So that, that light wasn't working. Correct. Yeah. yeah, so that light wasn't yeah. working. The only outside light we have is the solar light that's on mm -hmm. the, the carport. And that's motion activated. And it's motion activated. <laughs> so yeah, it was, it was, it was dark. the stars was really cool. <laughs> Just the the quiet of everything, except mm -hmm. for that darn cricket. Just <laughs> that cricket all night long. But yeah, so. Uh, Sunday. Sunday, wake up, I wake up to a couple dings on my phone, a couple messages coming through, and this was about five in the morning. So in my slumber, waking up, thinking, oh, we must have power and internet again, because for our cell service to work, it, use, it needs to use Wi-Fi over the internet. To, it's just <laughs> bad service out here, basically. Yeah. Um, and so I'm like, okay, that must be. So I, I check and nope, we have no power, no internet, but somehow my phone is getting text messages. I read them, I don't know, they were old messages from my, my mom and brother, the communications from you know a couple days that weren't coming through. So I go back to go back to bed, wake up again a couple hours later with the same dinging going on. Mm -hmm. So our cell service started working mm -hmm. on our personal on our phones. personal phones, but only for text messaging, not for data, mm -hmm. not for browsing websites or getting news or whatever. We're still relying on on, on your work. work phone. But we're getting more and more information about how much devastation devastation mm -hmm. is happening around our area the the dam up river from us um it was was it saturday gosh what was the day was it saturday morning no it was friday i think friday evening friday evening it was like 11 15 or something like that friday evening the water had crested the dam and started heading down heading down river flooding mm -hmm. flooding and we actually went back there on saturday to see just to see the river to see mm -hmm. it up so high after the weather had stopped yeah we, mm -hmm. when we felt it was it was safe to safe walk through our walk woods through the, <laughs> walk through the woods no winds yeah. no rains being cautious about you know um as we approach the river mm -hmm. but what we found was like i guess i'm kind of going back on, back on saturday now as we're walking, you guys know that we walk parallel to our creek, and then it meets up with the river. And you know that we have that that mill, that old grain mill site that was built in 1800, and there's the rock foundation that's still standing. And that's about 300 feet away from where it meets the river. Mm -hmm. It was covered in mud. Mm -hmm. And we're like, what in the world? Yeah, and trees were had fallen. Yeah, a huge oak tree had fallen right on, right over the mm -hmm. the stacked rocks we don't know how much damage there is yeah. but it's covered in mud and so my initial thought was that the creek had had run so much that it was bringing mud down but it was weird because it kind of stopped at one point mm -hmm. up creek it was not dirty but it, it started right at that and and then headed towards the river and that mill site is right before one of our two waterfalls which again the what do you would say about 20 feet higher again the creek with those little waterfalls and those rock tables I, I would say the yeah i would say the rock foundation for the mill site mm -hmm. is 50 feet above the normal nolachucky yeah levels so we 
get to the edge of our property overlooking the knoll checking, it's really high, but we see evidence not five feet from where we're standing, mud mm -hmm. just covering the banks and then looking at the trees that are really high in the, in the river and there's debris in the trees at our higher than our eye level. Mm -hmm. So the water had gone up that high, flooded into our creek area, brought all of this mud up to the where the mill site was, to the to like five feet from the crest of our property mm -hmm. top at that point. Mm -hmm. It's still lower than where we are here. Mm -hmm. But oh my gosh, yeah. that was so much water. Yeah. So much water. It's like, man, I wish we had had a camera back there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then and then we're we're sitting there and all of a sudden I realize, um, honey, there's a bear print right <laughs> there in the mud. Yep. Fresh bear print. Okay, let's go. Yep. I mean, we had we had the pistol with us, but still. Yeah. Like, so, <laughs> head sorry. on a swivel. <laughs> yeah. So backtracking. So so Sunday things start coming in. Our mm -hmm. self service is working. We're able to communicate with our people through our normal uh, cell phones. Still getting just kind of news updates and stuff through mm -hmm. Katie's phone. And then but, I was finally able to get onto Facebook to update you all. Uh, or anyone that follows us on our Facebook page, just that we were safe and we were okay. Because again, we hadn't until that point been able to even get on because I can't do social media from my work phone. Yeah. So. Um, so it was about Sunday afternoon or so that we get notification that the bridges that they had closed that would prevent us from going to towns and to, into, you know, grocery stores and stuff, they reopened the bridges. So we could mm -hmm. get to town, but only portions of the town because the town's flooded. <laughs> and so, also the water restrictions. Yeah. That a lot of businesses were asked to close. Yeah, the high, most businesses, high, any high use water. Non-essential. Non-essential, yeah, mm -hmm. were closed. Um, Even like, like restrooms inside of uh, grocery stores were closed. So it's like you could go shopping, but you couldn't use the bathroom. Yeah. Yeah, so um, so we were relieved to know that if we needed to get into town, we could. Mm -hmm. Still no power, and still the looming water issue. Mm -hmm. Well, we start getting n notifications from neighbors and from people in town that their water is gone. gone. And um, that just meant that the reservoirs that would supply us water had emptied. Mm -hmm. And the only water that's remaining to come to our homestead or the neighbors around us or whatever is in the water lines, mm -hmm. um, you know, flowing downhill to us. Thankfully, so, we're towards the bottom of that hill. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we know that water shortage is going to be an issue. Yeah. Um, we had prepared. Mm -hmm. uh, we already had a we we had a bunch of rain water collecting in barrels. Um, anyway, which we can use as, you know, we could filter it and whatever. We can use it for drinking, for an, or for drinking and for animals, animals and yeah. whatever. And we can use pond water for animals if we need to. If we walk down to the creek, we can use it for animals. But we have enough water for ourselves mm -hmm. and for the animals. Um, and it wasn't until early Monday morning, this morning, that our internet came back on. Correct, yep. And, and so I was able to go to work today. <laughs> yeah. So I started um, doing a little bit more just reading since now I have, you know, internet and I can really see what's going on. And just the more that I see how much devastation mm -hmm. happened around us, bridges collapsing, um, obviously the, you know, the floods that happened on all the rivers around us, uh, houses being under just mud piles mm -hmm. and no one i mean this area wasn't prepared for it because we weren't originally on the initial flight or i said flight plan but you know the path and it kind of changed a couple of the, times of the, storm. of the storm and so and i mean who would have thought we're like 600 miles from where it hit landfall that it would hit that far inland it was just kind of i think a little bit insane for a lot of people to yeah. to grasp but i will say the one thing was just 
the support from the community. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely amazing. Um, and a lot of the pages that I'm on on Facebook, the homestead community, just bringing their totes, pumping water from their creeks so people could have toilet water or pumping water from their springs so there was fresh drinking water and bringing it to people in the surrounding communities was mm -hmm. awesome. Um, I had something I was going to say, but then I lost track. <laughs> so, yeah, I forgot what I was going to say. We, our property bordering the, the river, we're, like I said, 85 feet from the floodplain in, in elevation. <laughs> the, the river rose 30, 40 some feet at peak in our back area in order to get, actually it must have been at least 50 to get up to where the mill site was. Because yeah. it, you know, it kind of goes through a little valley. Mm -hmm. um, we read that when it was cresting the dam, it was flowing at 1.3 million cubic feet of water per second. And for comparison, when the... Um, Niagara Falls. Yeah, Niagara Falls is at peak. That's 700,000 cubic feet per second. It's almost double. Almost double. Just <laughs> a massive amount of water. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. We, The area wasn't expecting this to happen mm -hmm. because we weren't in the path. But what ended up happening was North Carolina... And you guys, many of you likely know, Western North Carolina got slammed mm -hmm. and they got hit so bad. Um, all of that water that hit the Appalachian Mountains started coming down our side, mm -hmm. flooding the rivers. And that's what caused the devastation is all the flooding, mm -hmm. not from the surface rain, but from the effects from the, the effects Carolinas, from the Carolinas mm -hmm. who got feet of water. Yeah poured on them. Yeah, because we only ended up getting a little over nine inches of rain. Over over a three or four day period. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there wasn't a lot of surface rain. Yeah. That wasn't our issue. I mean, and our creek wasn't even mm -mm. that high. Like, no, there's it, a lot of rain, but it wasn't. Had it been, yeah, not for coming back from the other side down the mountain, this area probably wouldn't have been mm -hmm. very bad at all. Yeah. And then the high winds, of course, didn't help with, you know, a lot of down trees. A lot of our neighbors, like the power lines are down because after you have rain and the wet conditions, a lot of the trees here have very shallow roots. And so once you have that wet soil condition, especially with the clay, and then you have the strong winds, it's very common in this area to have just mm -hmm. trees down all over. And unfortunately, I mean, there's still power lines down all around us. So we're very thankful that we have power right now yeah. and that we have internet because I mean, not even two streets down, mm -hmm. there's down power lines. Yeah. Literally across the road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like you can't, they can't even get in and out of their road. Right. Yeah. Um, so we were okay. Mm -hmm. We have, more than enough food to sustain us for months. <laughs> yeah. We have plenty of drinking water on hand, available to us, potable water, water mm -hmm. at least two weeks worth. I would say so, yeah. If, if we can serve. Yeah, if we, if can, we can serve, serve. and, you know. Um, you know, we live in the RV, so the RV already has a 60-gallon water tank, mm -hmm. so we can use that for showers and, and use it for um, dishes and stuff like that. So... Mm -hmm. We're okay. We have plenty of food and water for the animals. We're okay. And if power goes out again, we'll, we'll be fine. Mm -hmm. And we've checked on all of our neighbors, all of our friends that are in the affected areas, North Carolina and East Tennessee. By the grace of God, everybody's okay. Mm -hmm. and, they, and they have what they need to survive. Yeah. You know, we checked on Mr. Wayne. We checked on the haulers. We checked on... The yeoman we checked mm -hmm. on, I mean, just... Yeah, and then, you know, in talking to them, you know, also, you know, we had talked to, to Turtles, and yeah. then, you know, Art and Bree, and 
so the land and, you know, Calico Cow and like all of the, you know, by the extended communities and the folks we know and then the folks they know. And so we were able to get the messaging out yeah, that yeah. everyone was safe. Yeah. And we also checked on Billy and, and yeah, and Permapastures um, and Metcalf Mills. And Metcalf and, Mills. And so everybody's okay. You know, mm -hmm. they, they all have hardships. Yeah. But they're okay. So I would, I, the air, the, we were not pre we were not expecting this, not yeah. prepared for it to happen, but I was pleasantly, I'm pleasantly surprised on how prepared we are, we are mm -hmm. for an unexpected event like yeah. this. Like we're in a, we're in good shape. Yeah. So. Nothing like an unexpected natural. <laughs> I mean, we, we even, yeah, exactly. We even have spare diesel on hand mm -hmm. thanks to Wilson. You yeah. know, well, one day Wilson comes out, comes out to, to help put the beam in place. And he's like, oh yeah, I bought you, uh, you know. You need more than one five gallon jug yeah, of diesel. He, he <laughs> four gallon jugs of, four or five gallon jugs of diesel, full of diesel. Like, Wilson, why'd you, thank you. <laughs> so we have spare diesel on here. Like we're, we're yeah. good, yep. we're good. And then obviously, since we live in the RV, we have extra propane, so, mm -hmm. and the generator we purchased is dual, so it's propane or gas. Mm -hmm. So we're able to, you know, have both forms. If we ran out of one or if we wanted to conserve one, we can have the other, so. Mm -hmm. And then of course, all of the <laughs> extra battery backups that we have, you know, came in extremely handy because we had one inside the RV, we had one outside of the RV, uh, so they were p two different ones were powering two different things for the RV. Then we had another one inside the house that was freezers. Um, yeah, powering for the freezers. So it was it was great. And mm. those you know can last anywhere from twelve to twenty four hours depending. And then we had the generator to charge those as needed. So again, we were and solar panels and solar panels if the yep. sun was out. So yep. yeah, we were like in good I, shape. Like I mentioned, we have the water water catchment fresh water system for the RV then we have if we needed to we had 50 gallons of water in the hot water heater like right. we're, we're okay yeah yeah so but but thank you to all of you oh, that reached yeah. out to us and that messaged us I tried to get back to everyone as soon as we could I know some of it took a few days because <laughs> we didn't have service but we do appreciate y'all reaching out and all of the sweet offers to help us but we are okay mm -hmm. pretty crazy yeah Really pretty crazy. Like I said, it was a very long and stressful weekend. But yeah. We made it through and... Yep. No animals were harmed. Nope. I mean, on our side. Like, yeah. They're all good. Yeah, everyone's safe. I mean, we even had the geese laying eggs in random places. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, it was, you know, mamas, all the mamas and babies, all safe. Yep. Um, baby chicks. All the baby chicks. Didn't lose any baby chicks, so... All the mamas were good. We just had to give them a little extra shelter because some of them like to, sh when they're broody, they like to have odd places where they keep their babies. Mm -hmm. So just gave them a little extra shelter so they could get out of the rain for a couple days. Yeah. But yeah. So that was it. That was our that was our action-packed <laughs> weekend. Yep. Yeah. So. All right. Enough okay. chatting. Enough chatting. We will see you tomorrow. All right. <laughs> Bye. Take care, everyone. Thanks for watching. Bye.